welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be sharing Lesson 13 for May the 29th, 2022. We're still in Unit 3 entitled Liberating Letters and our topic for today taken from Adult Quarterly is entitled Choosing Well. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Romans chapter 6 uh, verses 1 through 7. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Galatians chapter 5 uh, verses 16 through uh, 26 and we will be studying today from uh, the fifth chapter of Galatians chapter 16 through 26. Our key verse reads, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. That's taken from Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 25 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore the freedoms gained by walking by the Spirit. Secondly, to desire the personal and relational qualities of a Spirit-led life. Thirdly, to support one another in living a life centered on Jesus Christ. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled Spirit Freed. Uh, the second outline is entitled Spirit Fruit. And then the third outline is entitled Spirit Footpath. We certainly thank and praise God for yet another opportunity and a privilege to be able to share God's word with you. Uh, we thank God for all of the uh, pleasant parishioners and, and, and those who have joined us uh, to participate in this lesson. We thank God for uh, your life. We thank God for your families and we certainly want to encourage you to um, get your Bible and be prepared to uh, take some notes. We want to share some scripture with you today and just to talk a little bit about this uh, book of Galatians. I hope that you will uh, read the entire book. It's only six chapters uh, that you can get a full understanding of uh, where our lesson will take us today from uh, the fifth chapter. And we certainly want to continue to keep uh, one another in prayer. Uh, keep our country in prayer, keep our leaders in prayer. Uh, God uh, certainly is, is able and capable of helping us get to where we need to be. So we want to keep that in mind today. I want to begin uh, with just a little bit of our biblical context that's taken from our faith uh, pathway biblical studies uh, book. Uh, this uh, particular context will help us uh, to understand where uh, uh, we will be drawing our points today. But the biblical context or the text for today's uh, lesson deals with living out the gospel uh, by walking in the spirit. Uh, the lessons that we've had in, in this unit three uh, dealing with liberating letters it challenges the believers to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit uh, it is only by his power that we are able to live in harmony loving and serving one another with humility also life in the spirit is the effective antidote to pull uh, 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 of the flesh uh, the sinful inclination that persists in the hearts of humanity uh, rather than to devour one another spiritually that you can see that in Galatians 5 15 uh, Paul writes that believers should display godly love to one another uh, the outward evidence of the spirits work in the believers heart is manifested in the ability to choose well and make godly decisions that benefit the whole uh, of the body of Christ and glorify God. And so I want to go back just to talk about um, a little bit about this letter. I think it's a relevant discussion. Um, and I want you to imagine uh, yourself uh, uh, 
initially giving your life to Christ you heard the good news you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ you gave your life to Christ and then you began to hear other teachings uh, you began to hear other doctrines if you will other heresies uh, that 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 are different or sort of a, de a departure from what you heard when you got saved how would you feel about that how would that impact you uh, and that that is the case uh, that happened uh, with these Gentile converts uh, the Apostle Paul um, uh, preached to them uh, Paul made converts uh, in the Roman province of Galatia uh, he made converts on his uh, first, second, and third uh, missionary journeys. Uh, you can look at Acts chapter uh, 13, uh, verse 4, uh, chapter 14 of the book of Acts, verse 28. Then on Paul's second uh, missionary journey, the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 6. And then Paul's third missionary journey, um, uh, you can see that in Acts chapter uh, 18 uh, verse 23 so these individual converts had heard Paul's message gospel of grace the good news right and so but he also had to uh, write again to these converts these church folk um, because there was uh, the case of a serious defection or departure uh, from the gospel from the teachings um, so Paul had to number one he had to defend his apostleship uh, but he also had to uh, combat this issue of defection of these converts who were walking away from the gospel that had been preached to them I want to read something to you very quickly Galatians chapter 5 um, this is not in our lesson text but I want to just lay some groundwork here and I want to deviate just a little bit from the norm of how I would present this lesson because I want to uh, focus a little bit on what's happening to people right what's happening to us as church folks uh, what what uh, the potential uh, could be uh, and why we are find ourselves sometimes defecting but Galatians chapter 5 I want to go there very quickly and I want to read verse 7 and verse 8 just to set the tone Paul uh, writes here uh, he says you ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth? Verse 8, this persuasion does not come from him who calls you. And I just want to just pause right there. Uh, and if I can just summarize the verses I just read to you, Paul is essentially saying to these converts, what happened to you, right? What happened to you? Uh, what went on? that you are defecting what kind of battle what kind of struggle are you having that would cause you to go backward and not forward um, all of us uh, our ears uh, we have people that we like to listen to uh, we have messages that we like to listen to uh, but you're hearing we have to make sure we understand what we are absorbing uh, who is teaching us who is preaching to us what are they saying to us is it gospel uh, 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 founded um, uh, because we are going to have to make some decisions in life and I should tell you there will be fruit from a good decision and there will be fruit from a bad decision right uh, uh, there will be fruit no matter how or what direction we decide to uh, go in and so as we get into this lesson as Paul 
uh, uh, reaches a conclusion uh, of the book of Galatians uh, as we examine chapter 5. I want to note here uh, as we get into this first, first outline talking about spirit freed. Uh, this is taken from Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 through 18. I want to read this from the uh, NIV translation and then we'll talk about it on the other side. The Bible says, So I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Verse 17, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are not uh, to do whatever you want verse 18 but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law I just want to sort of unpack this for us uh, as, as the Apostle Paul is telling these Gentile converts about their lifestyle the choices that they are going to make in life that even though we are saved we have to now live according to the dictation or the unctioning of the Holy Spirit versus the 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 unctioning or the dictation of our flesh or what is carnal right uh, and so Paul says if you walk this way you won't gratify the desires of the flesh but I want you to pay close attention to verse 17 because this is where I really want to talk about uh, the fact that there is a literal war going on inside of individuals right you and I are no exception to this and what I mean is that you and I at some point even though we're saved, we still have to face the struggle and the temptation that comes from our flesh, that comes from our nature. And Paul says something here that helps, un helps us to understand that there is a war going on inside. He says, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict so in essence what Paul is saying God is fighting right God through his spirit is warring with your and my spirit the flesh that carnal mind that carnal inclination that wants to step outside of the sanctification if you will or, or the salvation that uh, uh, that God has offered to us in an effort to live according to our own uh, uh, mindset our own uh, dictation if you will and this war is going on so you will have to make some decisions in life and so but the war is going on as Paul would, 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 would have us to understand so that you are not just free to do whatever you want to do so God is going to say something to you God is going to reveal something to you you're going to understand a conflict that you're going in the wrong direction and so you should uh, you should understand and I should understand uh, 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 we should we should realize that God is trying to protect us uh, and to safeguard us in the decisions uh, that we make and so this is an internal struggle this is a spiritual struggle and so uh, uh, so what would it mean if an individual uh, uh, is habitually sinning what would it mean for a believer to uh, be an habitual sinner uh, what that should tell us is that that individual has overstepped the instructions of the Holy Spirit I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help us to understand that 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 these saved individuals uh, 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 at the Church of Galatia and even us today 
that we are having these kinds of struggles and so as we get to unpack the decisions that we make that that are against the spirit of god you can see that these individuals are in even us today that we lost a battle right and, and we'll we'll talk about that uh, uh uh we lost the battle if you will and and i want you to uh, at your leisure i want you to look at romans chapter 8 and as a matter of fact let's just go there very quickly uh, because I want to read this uh, so we can understand this this type of conflict that's that's going on uh, this war that's going on inside of us uh, and 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 what we should understand and take away from this is that God has placed us in a particular position when he saved us that is the reality of things uh, that's that new man that's that that born again that regenerate individual well the question is what happened to the unregenerate to this the the person or the nature that God saved you from that particular entity is walking right alongside of that regenerate individual and it's looking for an opportunity to overtake right it's looking for an opportunity to reassert itself back into the house where it used to live I, i'm trying to make sense church i hope you understand that this thing uh, 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 of temptation and and decision making is a process that we face each and every day and let me i've said for years and i and i want to underscore this everything that the lord saved you from will be your battleground i want you to understand that today but romans uh, the book of Romans chapter 8 uh, I want to look at uh, verse 8 through 11 and then we'll get uh, uh, actually verse 9 through 11 and then we'll get back to our lesson outlines but I want to I want to share this with you because Paul is still talking here uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 9 he says uh, uh, but you are not in the flesh right He's talking to church folk. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Then he goes on to say, Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Verse 10. And if Christ is in you, watch this, the body is dead because of sin but the spirit is life because of righteousness but if verse 11 but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead dwells in you he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you the holy ghost that you and i have is not in you just to help you shout let me just say that to you not to help you uh, uh, he's not there just to help you become someone that 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 shouts well but he is there to help you live well I hope that makes sense and so this is why the Holy Spirit is warring with your and my old nature right to safeguard us to help us to understand there is no turning back and God will fight for you he will fight for those that he has saved and, and has brought into his covenant uh, uh, but we have to cooperate with the Spirit of God this is what Paul is saying here so uh, uh, in our first outline so Paul is saying this is how you're going to have to live this is how you and I have to live now according to the dictation of the Holy Spirit. So we have to cooperate, right? We have to, that's our part, to believe and to receive, right? Our part in this is to cooperate with the Spirit of God in accordance with the Word of God, right? So what happened to these converts they got saved through faith, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then some other 
uh, uh, teachers started coming in and adding to the doctrine that Paul had taught them and telling them that they needed to be circumcised, right? A, a human effort, right? They needed some kind of human exercise to, to be incorporated into the body or into the covenant promises of God. And Paul is saying that's wrong. Because if that's the case, if you could save yourself, then Christ died needlessly, right? There was no need from the, for the cross if you could justify yourself through some type of work of the Mosaic law. So this is the conflict that is going on inside of us. And if we would cooperate with the Spirit of God, then God will demonstrate to us that he is able to keep you and to keep me from falling. God doesn't need our help. He needs our cooperation, right? So if we don't overstep the word of God, then we'll stay in the safe place. So I want us to understand. I also want to give you the first epistle of John chapter 3, verses 7 through 9. And also, I want to give you 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. I hope this makes sense for you today, church. But we need to uh, unpack. Uh, 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 sometimes uh, we don't have enough discussion about what's happening to people, even church folks. We just like to dress up and, and, and appear as though we're not dealing with anything, as though we are not struggling with anything. Nobody is telling us or addressing how we are supposed to address these battles that are going on inside of us. And, you know, I, I, I thought about this some years ago uh, when the Lord reminded me. He said, if you need more power, ask for it, right? And we need to ask God for power to keep us in the position that God has established and help us to make decision it doesn't mean that 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 we won't fall but it need it, it means that we need to do something about it when we fall what happened to us as paul is sharing with uh, uh the church of galatia i want to move on church but i want to i just wanted us to understand that 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 there 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 is a struggle going on right and god is battling for the very soul right that he saved. He is going to war on the inside to keep you. He is telling you, don't go there. Don't do that. Stay over here. Follow these directions. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody and I'm trying to help myself to understand that God is talking to us and we need to stop saying that something told me as children of God and put a label on this that the Spirit of God has a work to do. John chapter 16, uh, if you have time, will help us to understand there's a convicting process going on and the Holy Spirit has a mouth and he does talk. Right? So we need to appreciate these things. But the second outline is entitled uh, Spirit Fruit. This is taken from Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through uh, 23. So let's start looking at these characteristics here uh, from the NIV translation of verse 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality impurity and debauchery right verse 20 idolatry and witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of rage selfish ambition dissension factions verse 21 and envy drunkenness orgies and the like paul says i warn you as i did before that those who will live like this right will not inherit the kingdom of God. So all of these characteristics, I would define them as choices. They are decisions, right? And Paul is saying here that if this is your course, right? So look at how, and, and, and these don't happen, these character traits uh, 
uh, we should understand they don't happen one at a time. They can happen in a flood. You could have all of these characteristics and multiple characteristics happening at the same time, coming out of the same individual, coming out of the same heart of the of the individual. So we make multiple decisions. And, and the devil, uh, if, if, if we can just take this uh, uh, in, 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 in sort of a, 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 a summary here, when the devil gets in the house, right? There's no particular room that he likes to go in. He likes to go in all the rooms, right, of our understanding and, uh, and, 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 and what makes us uh, who we are. And so he will go wherever he's allowed to go, and then these choices will, will be the fruit of where he sits or where he resides in that individual uh, uh, soul. And so uh, uh, all of these things... And sometimes we don't recognize these patterns and they, they become a way of life, right? And so we start to follow the dictation of our flesh. We lose the battle. It doesn't mean the Holy Spirit uh, 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 doesn't have power, but it means we are overstepping the instruction. We are overstepping the word of God. We have an, a different interpretation of God's cross uh through jesus christ and so and so as these things began to manifest uh, uh and i want us to understand uh, you know i was looking at this we have access right watch this you have you and i have access to unlimited power right when was the very last time you asked god for more of his power more of his spirit for the battle that you were waging for the battle of the past, for the battle over your flesh, for the battle over your mindset, right? What's the very last time? I, I, I think it should be noted here as Paul was talking about, as I read to you in Romans chapter 8, that, 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 that he says in verse 11, but if the spirit of him the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. That's the kind of power you have, you and I have in us. Let me, let me put it to you this way. That's the capability of the spirit that you and I have that resides in us as believers. It has the power to raise the dead. So there is nothing, what that should tell us that is that there is nothing that God cannot do in your life and in my life. There is nothing, there is no battle that he cannot effectively win. But what God does need is our obedience. He does need our cooperation. He does need us. And it, it doesn't mean we'll get it right every time, right? This is why Paul is writing to these individuals. They are, they are going in the wrong direction, but there's a comeback. There's a way they can get back to God. There's a way that they can get back to the instruction. And Paul is giving them, uh, uh, warning them and giving them some advice that they have resources available for them, right, to combat these particular character traits. So you might wonder why why is Paul saying this, you know, to these individuals? Did he see anything? Uh, 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 we don't have that kind of information. But what Paul does understand is the flesh. Paul does understand human nature, right? And so human nature, there, there are no breaks on it, right? We'll become, and as you see in, even in our culture today, we invent sin. We invent things that nobody else has seen. Right, we are extremely creative. The human nature, the flesh, can be extremely creative when it wants to be. Right, especially when it's uh, 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 disobeying God. You should read Romans chapter one if you have time, verses eighteen down to uh, verse thirty-two. So, so we can we can really go to the floor in terms of our obedience. Right and our adherence to the word of God. We can escape, we can get away from uh, that flesh if, if we obey 
what God tells us to do. But verse 22, Paul says, but the fruit, right, of the Spirit, the fruit that comes from obeying God, if I could just say that to you, is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, verse 23, gentleness, and self-control against us thing, there is no law. All right? So we can, we can be full of these kinds of characteristics if we let the Spirit handle it. If we let the Spirit of God handle it. You know, one of the prayers, if I can just share something personal with you, one of the prayers I've prayed and I continue to pray over the course of my life uh, in Christ is to ask God to help me with myself, right? To let God help me with myself. To help, to ask God to help me uh, 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 stay the course, if you will. I realize I cannot keep myself. So I have to turn myself over, right? Doesn't mean I get it right all the time, but my efforts are to let God control, right? To let God into the situation, to pray and ask God to help me where uh, uh, I may be weak, to help me in those hours of testing. And so God wants to help us. And if we would make those kinds of decisions, then the fruit, you know, would, would be that I love God more, that I would enjoy the joy of the Holy Spirit, that I would have peace, that I would be able to, you know, tolerate adversity and all of these other things that pop up in our life. I can still be kind to you even though I'm going through certain situations. I can still uh, uh, exhibit some goodness and I can still be faithful. Isn't that huge? That I can still be consistent with God even though uh, there are circumstances in my life. But I've allowed God to help me. Right? And this is what Paul is saying here. That there needs to be some control, some structure to the Christian life. Right? Via the Holy Spirit. And a Christian that is out of control is a dangerous individual just like he was or she was when they were in the world what do I mean by that we are self-destructive people without the Holy Spirit and that's what Paul is saying here the fruit of the flesh here all of these character traits here we can summarize them as being self-destructive we are literally destroying ourselves from the inside out we are losing battles on the inside and so we are debasing ourselves we are destroying ourselves and that's what it looks like on the outside right don't ever think because you see situations sometimes on the outside that there has not been a struggle on the inside that's where it took place that's where the battle was lost right and so these other character traits, just uh, they are just an expression of a fallen state or a lost battle. So if you have fallen in a particular situation, then you don't stay there. You don't have to stay there as a believer. And even if you are not saved, if you believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and, and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he will establish you and you have uh, the same access to the same power of anyone that has been saved. Right? So God is saying you don't have to go that way. But if you do that, if you do go this way, if you live this kind of destructive life, uh, and, and we should understand, and you, we could, we could appreciate the fact that God didn't save us, nor did he send his son, Christ Jesus, to die on the cross, that we should be better sinners. That is completely contrary to the word of God. So our devotion reading that we had in Romans chapter 6, I would encourage you to read all of that. That is not why uh, uh, God sent his son to die, 
so that we could engage because we are free in Christ, that we could engage in all of the sin that we could get our hands on. That is against the cross. That is against the blood. That is against the doctrine. That is against the resurrection. That is against the trinity. That is against the purposes of God. So if we're hearing these kinds of doctrines that are telling us it's okay to be an habitual sinner and that we are given license to that, I'm telling you here today that is against the fabric of Scripture. As I read to you early from Galatians chapter 5, Paul said you were doing well, but something happened to you. You changed. So God doesn't change his word right his word remains the same our last outline I would also give you the first epistle of John chapter 4 and you should read all of that beginning at verse 1 spirit footpath this is taken from Galatians chapter 5 verse 24 through 26 again from the NIV, NIV translation those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires since we live by the Spirit let us keep in step with the Spirit verse 26 let us not become conceited provoking and envying each other let me go back up to verse 24 because I think that's worth talking about those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. What does that mean? Right? With its passions and desire. Those who belong to Christ have matured. Right? They have accepted that God has set them apart. They are living in the sanctification process. They are allowing God to help them. God is empowering them. They are, they are not doing this on their own. Right? Those who belong to Christ. Christ has given them. Christ has given them. The sufficiency and the power. To overcome. Right? Those things that belong to the flesh. So they are not habitual sinners. These individuals are learning and have learned how to, how to manage conflict through the Spirit of God as opposed to handling it on their own, right? You have access, right? I would, I would give you Ephesians chapter 1. You should read all of that. But it is possible. When we read verse 24, we should understand it is possible to live in this world and not be a part of this world it is highly possible for you to be you and I to be victorious greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world greater right so these individuals have rested in who they are and what they are and are determined to live their lives reliant upon the Spirit of God, right? It doesn't mean it doesn't come up, but what did you do about it, right? It doesn't mean you don't have to face it anymore, but what did you do about it? It doesn't mean that you uh, never fail again, but what did you do about it? That's the concept we want to take away so since we live by the Spirit, we have to, we got to walk this way, right? This is the way we have to live. One of the things that, w that I want to share with you, this is, a, this is a brand new way that we have never lived before. We used to follow every inclination that, 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 that came into our mind. But now, under the, 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 the dictation of the Holy Spirit, we have to live a different way now. We can't just go and do I mean, we do have the liberty. I, I, I'm not arguing that you're not grown. What I'm arguing is that you become humble. Right? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I think this is what Paul is getting at here. 
that we can rely on the Holy Ghost to help us, right? He's going to speak to you, right? He's going to say something to you. He's going to reveal something to you. He's going to come to you. He may even chasten you, right? Because you are a child of God. You have been bought with a price. You do belong to Jesus Christ. He has redeemed you, right? He bought you with his own blood. So we belong to him and, 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 and we ought to glory in that position. That there is nothing God would not do. I heard Jesus say this, I believe in John chapter 16. He said, those that are in my hand, no man shall pluck them out. So we need to glory in the position. Don't let anyone tell you that you need to do something to save yourself. If, if that was possible. Again, Christ died needlessly. Let's pray, church. Father God, we thank you for this lesson, for opening up our eyes that we might be able to see. Thank you for helping us to understand that we need you in a desperate way. Father, we need you. Somebody's listening right now is struggling just as these new converts were at the church of Galatia. And I'm just praying that you would anoint them right now in the name of Jesus. Grant unto us the power that we need to live in this sinful world, that it's, it's growing increasingly sinful. So we need your power to sustain us. Father, we want to thank you for bringing us out of the world. We should have and could have died in a world of sin and been lost forever. But the cross had already been portrayed. The blood had already been shed. The justification had already been established. And we believe because of the good news that was preached to us. And we got saved because of the messages of Jesus Christ. And we testified that, that we are children of God. And Father, we need to stay the course even as we see the day drawing nigh. And I just pray, God, that you would, uh, you would bless our hearts and our minds. And I know that. There are many struggles. I know there are many temptations that we face each and every day, but I just pray that you would multiply the power of the Holy Ghost for every temptation in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would anoint our hands and our feet, our hearts and minds, that we would walk up righteously before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for this lesson, for opening it up that to help us to understand that you are fighting for us. You are fighting for us. You are going to war to keep us in the position that you have established for us. And I just lift up this nation in prayer. And I would just ask you to say to the uttermost, we need to be saved today from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Father, we need you in a desperate way. We need you on the inside. Suicide is on the rise, oh God, because of the hopelessness oh, in men's lives today. But I'm praying and rebuking that spirit. Jesus said, I die that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke the enemy who comes against the saints of God. Oh God, that, that to deter us and to tempt us to go backward. There is no turning back. Oh God, we want to be able to be those who lift up clean hands without wrath and without doubt. We thank you for the gospel and, and we pray that we will live to be good witnesses that we might bring you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. God bless you, church. I love you. I just want you to know that, that we are all going through something. But there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we just have to use, as they taught us years ago, they say, use what you got. And so you got something that you can use today. You got a position in the body of Christ that is full of resources that are available, that are free of charge. You just need to ask and believe. And God said he will do it. God bless you, church, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. God bless you.